Kia ora and hello from Endometriosis New Zealand. I'm Deborah Bush and I'm Chief Executive of the organisation. March is International Endometriosis Awareness Month and this month we're going to be bringing you video clips, newsy bits and something special just for you. Today I'm going to introduce you to Dr Fiona Connell. Dr Connell is a gynaecologist, an advanced laparoscopic surgeon and a clinician with a very special interest in pelvic pain. Today we're though going to ask her some questions about fertility in response to those questions that you posed for us either in private messaging or on our Facebook posts. So I welcome wholeheartedly Dr. Connell. And did I say, by the way, that she is an ESIG member, so you can check her out on the Endometriosis Special Interest Group page. And also, she's on the Endometriosis New Zealand board. So without further ado, and warmly, I welcome Dr. Fiona Connell to the screen. Hi, Deborah. I'm Fiona, and thanks for inviting me to answer some of your questions. That's right. So we've got some questions about fertility, Fiona. And the first one says, why does endometriosis affect fertility? I heard even stage one endo can make it hard to get pregnant. Well, it's true. Endometriosis definitely does affect fertility. But I think the very important thing to understand is that it doesn't mean that you can't have children. It just means that it might take you a bit longer sometimes to get pregnant or you might need help. And there are three main ways that endometriosis can do this. One is that if you have a lot of pain in your pelvis, it can lead to a lot of difficulty when you have intercourse. And that might be from actually having sex itself or because the muscular spasms that you have due to the pain can make it difficult to actually achieve it. So there are problems having intercourse. And then there are issues with inflammation. So endometriosis causes a lot of inflammatory change in your pelvis, and this affects egg quality, um, it affects how the sperm and the egg meet, and it also affects how the pregnancy can implant. Um, as endometriosis gets worse, it can also affect fertility by mechanical reasons. So the more inflammation you get, the more scarring you get, and that can really stick your ovaries and your tubes down to the point where it mechanically gets difficult for a fertilised egg to get into the uterus. Look, the second question says, I'm so confused. I have endo. I went to a fertility specialist after a year of trying and she prescribed drugs to help me get pregnant. I had a second opinion because I just didn't know whether that was the right thing to do with a laparoscopic surgeon, and he said I had to have surgery to get rid of the endo and adhesions and make sure everything is in the right place before starting fertility treatment. I just want you to explain why there's a difference of opinion. Sure. I think that um, sometimes in endometriosis, the answer of what to do is really straightforward. And then sometimes it's a little bit more involved and a little bit more complex, and there's a lot more to weigh up to get to the right decision for you. And when you go and see a doctor, our job is to assess you and hear what your priorities are, to figure out the reasons why you're not getting pregnant, what symptoms you've got, and what order it makes most sense for you to approach things. So when you're weighing all these things up, it can just take a little bit of change in the story to put you down one path, or a little bit of a change in the story to put you down another path. And it might not be that those two things are right and wrong. It might be that they're actually quite equivalent, and it's just that the certain doctor has picked up on something a little bit different from what the other one has, or you might have emphasised something more to one than the other. And I think it's really important that if you're confused by the treatment options that you've been given, that you have the kind of relationship with your doctor where you can actually ask them and just clarify why it is that they've said that. And you should be able to say, I've had this other advice which is a little bit different. What do you make of that? And if both of those pathways are reasonable, then there's no reason why those doctors can't talk to each other. And it might be that they come up with an answer which is even slightly different from what they both mentioned initially. So I think there's a lot of room for flexibility and change in the way that people get managed. And it's not always just one right, right mm. answer. Mm. In listening to your answer, I'm just wondering from a, a perspective that we're often asked, if the endometriosis hasn't been excised in the first place, you know, is that something that you would recommend first up or? Not usually. I think if you're going to go down the path of surgery in the first place, I think it's really 
worthwhile to get your endometriosis treated. And we've got very high level evidence that that is better than just doing a diagnostic laparoscopy and looking and leaving the endometriosis there. Right. So really important to start with a normal looking pelvis with no endometriosis and adhesions, really. In most situations. Yeah. Mm. So the next question has come in, and, and this is posed by lots and lots of women. Yeah. So the question is, do you think we should be thinking about freezing eggs or something like that if we have endo? I think there's no harm in thinking about it. Um, the, I think the main reason women will think about this in the first place is because they're worried that they might not meet the right person before their fertility declines. And we know that fertility declines as we age anyway, and with endo it might decline at a faster rate, um, and also that they might not be in the right situation to have a child before, um, whilst their eggs are still fertile. Um, it's, I think, important to really think about whether how real that fear is, because how much your fertility is affected by endo depends on a lot of things, like your age, how bad the endo is, and whether your ovaries are affected or not. So for your particular situation, it might not be something that you really need to worry too much about. I think the best thing is to talk to the person who knows you and your endometriosis and talk in depth about it. Yeah, thanks so much. And this next question sort of follows on from that, really, because it says, well, how does endo affect egg quality? It's mainly to do with inflammation. So when your body responds to something like endometriosis, there's a lot of chemicals made which cause pain and also just quite a unpleasant environment for tissues. So the egg quality decreases because of that, really, the inflammation. And then as time goes on, if you develop an endometrioma, that also further decreases the egg quality because of mechanical reasons as well as mm. the ovarian tissue stretches. Yes. Well, question number four, it makes me really upset when I'm told, oh, you have pelvic pain. Is all endo now called pelvic pain? The thing is, I could have told the doctor that pelvic pain doesn't sound like a diagnosis to me. Well, it's not a diagnosis. Endometriosis is the diagnosis for some people who have pelvic pain, but there's a lot of people with pelvic pain who don't have endo. And there are quite a lot of people with endo who don't have pain. So... Saying that is just describing what you're going through. And I think it's important that you feel like your doctor is taking you seriously when they're talking about the pain. And it's not that you're reacting to a feeling that you're being dismissed in any way. Um, but it is just a description. It is not the diagnosis, you're right. Thanks. And the next one says another, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I have had surgery to excise my endo and I'm still in pain. What do you think I should do now? I think you need more help. And it's not uncommon to have surgery for endometriosis and still have pain. You're not alone. There's lots of people in that situation. Um, the other reasons for pelvic pain are to do with how your uterus is set up and how many nerve endings you've got there, how hard your uterus has to cramp to get blood out if you've got a little cervix. You might have something called adenomyosis. And then there's all of the other things that can go along with pelvic pain, like pelvic muscle spasm, irritable bowel syndrome, and central sensitization. Um, and that can add to the situation. And really, if the surgery hasn't sorted you out, you should see somebody with a special interest who can direct you and address all those other things as well. Thanks so much, Fiona. We've loved having you talk to us today. It's been really wonderful. We really appreciate what you do for Endometriosis New Zealand and for your patients. So thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you more. If you want to check out more about Fiona, please look up her profile on the ESIC page and also the Endometriosis New Zealand board. Thanks so much.